Does standing on one leg affect your ability to perceive rhythm? We often use motions of the body as metaphors for musical experiences, like, say, horn stabs and punchy snares, bass drops, and swung rhythms. And there might be a good reason for that, too. Rhythmic cognition is likely embodied. One recent study found that the vestibular system, the system that governs our body's sense of balance through the inner ear, can affect the way that we perceive metric accent. Change the body's balance, and it changes your ability to perceive pulse through time. So what does this have to do with single leg balance? Well, recently I got a really interesting question from a viewer. Jamie Buttonsaw writes, Question for your next Q&A. Does standing on one leg improve your ability to keep in time? My trombone tutor has used standing on one leg while playing as a comedic punishment for poor playing, but we found that it does actually seem to help one's ability to not subconsciously speed up or slow down. After reading this comment, I immediately thought about how, when growing up, I used to see my mom, Hey, Ma. who was a voice teacher, do the exact same thing with her students. And then very slowly go to that one-legged stance. I asked her why she makes her students practice single-leg balance. It causes sort of a pelvic and torso stability, which at first is a little counterintuitive. You know, stand on one leg, you have trouble keeping balance, but if you practice it a little bit, you start to notice that it lines up everything to the mid-center of your body. The mid-center of the body, or the torso, is where larger groupings of time are naturally felt. Using motion capture, one study found that when we naturally synchronize our bodies to music, faster metric levels are embodied in the extremities, and slower ones in the central part of the body. Longer periods of musical time are more readily organized if the body is balanced, which is why the commenter found that standing on one leg meant it was less likely to speed up or slow down. By focusing on balance, Focus. time was organized more readily. What it does is it starts to cause you to feel a physical grounding in a way that maybe you're not used to. As you become attuned to it, you'll start to notice that these muscles in your body are engaging in a bit of a different way than they normally do. So maybe the trombone teacher wasn't using single leg balance as a punishment, but rather employing a balance technique that's used in other disciplines. Learning to stand on one leg is used in sports therapy to rehab athletes. And of course I use it in voice rehabilitation therapy for a lot of similar reasons. You also get standing on one leg exercises in yoga, in qigong, in martial arts. Better learn balance. Balance is key. Balance good, karate good. So I used to be very ungrounded when I performed. I did this kind of swaying thing, but in a way that was not at all in sync with the music. Really what it was was a kind of nervous energy that ultimately manifests itself in my rhythm and my performance. When you have somebody who's a musician or a singer who's kind of flailing all over the place or is not grounded, standing on one leg helps still all the diversionary movement and puts it where the energy has to originate. Now this doesn't mean that you can't move when you're performing. No, it just means that rhythm necessitates good balance. After all, athletes and dancers and martial artists move quite a lot in their craft. Athletes are more naturally attuned to various kinds of grounding because they have to work their feet, they have to work their legs, they have to work their thighs. I have to work it in such a way that they can also be flexible enough to respond to movement very quickly. Balance is important in any craft involving the body, and music is embodied in both performance as well as cognition. An imbalanced body will be less able to organize time. Bring balance to the force, not leave it in darkness. I've since become a lot more stable in my performing, even if sometimes I have that nervous energy. I have a higher level of grounding. I have the high ground. But I still could improve through single leg balance exercises, which is easier said than done. I think most physical and sports therapists like to see somebody able to stand on one leg at least 10 to 20 seconds. What you want to try to do is rearrange your body so that you are even enough in feeling what it's like through your hips. That's where the balance comes in. If you are off balance, it means that one side of the body is not engaged. Sometimes you have to shift your body very subtly in order to experience that. Thanks, Ma. If you're having trouble with this, you can put your hand on a surface. And if you want an extra challenge, you can practice looking up and looking side to side while you're standing on one leg. 
Now, one of the interesting things that I've found is that once you add the extra weight of your instrument to the equation, it actually doesn't matter a whole lot because throughout this entire time, you've been practicing actively finding your center of balance. That's been the center of your focus. Focus. focus is what was necessary to perform the rhythmic puzzle that I posed at the end of my last video. I asked people to take part in the 7-Eleven challenge, where you play a 7-Eleven polyrhythm, in other words, playing seven evenly spaced pulses in the same amount of time as 11 evenly spaced pulses in or around a 7-Eleven convenience store. That is really hard to do when you're talking. Anyway, people really enjoyed that challenge. A ton of submissions came in from all around the world on Instagram, not only from people just snapping out the rhythmic outline of the two pulses, but also some people trying to make musical sense of the strange pattern with little riffs and songs. The polyrhythmic counting exercise necessitated that everybody be in the moment. Nobody phoned it in, you, you really couldn't. The meme game was especially strong. There were several renditions of 7-Eleven All-Stars and 7-Eleven Licks, as well as a rendition of both at the same time. Everybody was focused and to some degree or another, grounded. So being more grounded means that you're more actively present in your lower body as sort of a mindful way of living. There's a tremendous amount of work put into this ridiculous little game, but you could kind of see that musical work reflected in people's bodies. You could see the focus. You could see the groundedness. I think most of us in Western culture are sort of profoundly disconnected from our bodies as, ground, as a grounding force. So that's why these tools, like standing on one leg, become almost physical therapy to connect you back in ways that you might be a little disconnected. One thing that I find a little odd is that even though now there's a sizable body of neuroscience research that suggests that to one degree or another, musical perception is embodied, links are in the description, there are not a lot of resources out there that talk about balance and musicianship. Anytime you look up single leg balance exercises, it's for other disciplines. Maybe that will change. Love you. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye. So does standing on one leg improve your rhythm? Well, there haven't been any scientific studies on this, but my intuition as a performer is that, yes, it will. I feel that rhythm is a property of the kinesthetic sense. We aren't mere passive observers to music, we create it in our bodies and ourselves. And single leg balance can only help with that.